Omar from Australia says that you said that whoever abandons Salat intentionally is kafir. And he's referring to the debate, which is known in, on, on YouTube as the great, the great debate, which was conducted in the Green Lane Masjid in Birmingham about seven, seven, six, seven years ago. And I was fortunate to sit with Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips to debate on this issue in the masjid. And it was a beautiful scientific argument where he presented his case that a person who abandons Salah cannot exit Islam. And I presented the other opinion. And if you would notice, if you watched the whole series, Omar, you will find that I didn't say that a person who abandons Salah is a kafir. It was the Prophet ﷺ. So the verses of the Quran and the hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ clearly states that the pledge between us and them is Salat. Whoever abandons it is a kafir. In Sahih Imam Muslim, بين المرء والشرك أو الكفر ترك الصلات between man and uh, uh, disbelief or shirk is abandoning salat. And in the Sunan, the Prophet said, فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرُ Whoever abandons it, he's a kafir. And I explained in that debate, and you can see it, it's on YouTube, it's for free, alhamdulillah. Uh, you can see that I have stated that this is the ruling in Islam, which is theoretical, meaning that whoever does this is a kafir. Likewise, when I say, Whoever prostrates to an idol is a mushrik. You don't have any disagreement with that. Is it not true? And you would say, no, I, I believe in that. So if I would say to you, Akhi, I know where you're going with your question. And this is not a true story which took place between Imam Shafi'i and Imam Ahmed. When Imam Ahmed said that whoever abandons Salah is a kafir, so Imam Shafi'i asked him, so okay, if this... Kafir wants to accept Islam. What should he do? Say, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah? He said, yes. So he already says, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. So how did you take him out? This is not authentic. This is not a true story. But I know where you're coming from. Let me ask you this. If someone says that I don't believe that drinking khamr, drinking wine, intoxicants, is prohibited, I believe it's halal. What would you say? So, no, this is kufr. Whoever says this is a kafir. Says, okay, now this guy wants to accept Islam. What should he do? You say, say, la ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah. Touche. The guy already says, la ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah. But the thin and fine lining here, the silver lining is that when he said, I don't believe intoxicants haram, he nullified la ilaha illallah. Because part of la ilaha illallah's belief is that you follow what Allah commanded you to, to falsify a verse in the Quran, then you're not a Muslim anymore. Likewise, who abandons salat totally, theoretically, he is a kafir. Now, practically, it's a different issue altogether because we cannot give takfir to an individual. So Ali doesn't pray. We know that whoever does not pray is a kafir. We cannot combine this equation and say, whoever does not pray is a kafir, Ali doesn't pray, the conclusion and the result is Ali is a kafir. No, we have to ensure that the conditions are fulfilled in Ali, that he's not ignorant, that he is not forced to do, do this, that he doesn't have any misinterpretation, among the other things, and that there are no obstacles preventing us from assuming or giving him takfir. So Ali doesn't pray, oh, he's a kafir. No, there's an obstacle, akhi. What is the obstacle? That he is mentally challenged, he's insane. Oh, I didn't know that. So now you know. There are many other reasons. So in a nutshell, akhi, I think yani, uh, I've answered your question. Practically speaking, we can't give takfir to people who do not pray until we ensure and we are certain that they have fulfilled the conditions that they are not willing to pray. And this is what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah be pleased, may Allah have mercy on his soul, said at the end, at the end 
of this discussion. He said that if a man was caught by the authorities and he was told pray, he said, I don't want to pray. I believe that prayer is one of the pillars of Islam, but I don't want to pray. And they keep on say, t telling him while he's in jail, we're going to chop your head off. Pray. He said, no, I'm not going to pray. I believe in Allah. I believe in the Prophet, but I'm not going to pray. Then he sees the executioner coming with his big blade and he's tied and is getting ready to chop his head off. And they give him the final warning. Akhi, come and pray. He said, no, I'm not going to pray. Ibn Taymiyyah says, this guy, once executed, he should be thrown in the desert. He's not a Muslim. No one is so defiant and adamant on not praying, knowing that he's going to die because of that, except that a person is not a Muslim. Allah knows best. Abu Yusuf said,